So Wall Street seems to be freaking out today. And uh, let's check the headlines for what's going on. Uh, Dow slides 400 points as Wall Street sell-off intensifies. Uh, I was trying to figure out, you know, which ones it was. It looks like uh, generally everything. There's a few green here and there, but uh, it's basically a red day for most stocks. Um, a couple of things that could be freaking out Wall Street. Uh, they're getting uh, more fines for the SEC. This is if you're using email uh, or WhatsApp, then that's private email, that is. Uh, to send messages, you're not supposed to do that. It's a big no-no. That was Wells Fargo and BNP. Uh, they also found some sort of uh, human skull. You can see this. Unlike uh, any human uh, ever seen, it's baffling. And um, I guess it could rewrite our story of evolution, but I don't think that's what's freaking it out. Uh, in fact, there's a couple of big stories that are freaking us out. Um, is uh, Chinese exports and imports are down. It's the worst since the start of the pandemic. And then you also have a big cut by Moody's cutting the ratings of banks. I remember we had Fitch cut the rating of the good old USA. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, dilemma because many people will be going on TV, and this is if you watch CNBC and stuff like that, and saying, hey, everything's great, everything's fine, uh, bye, bye, bye. Uh, and then uh, suddenly you, know, you get these ratings and she's going, surprise. Uh, so now let's go to the details of this stuff. So um, first we'll talk about the um, Chinese import and export uh, slowdown. Um, I have the charts right here. So uh, it looks like uh, many of the, um, this is the export side. So that means like how is worldwide demand or uh, how is uh, China getting goods from there to other places around the world? Uh, computers is really down. Uh, clothes is down. Steel, textiles, the fabric, circuits, et cetera. Um, but evidently cars is up and this is year over year and up, uh, when we say up, this is like, uh, maybe two, 3%, something like that. Um, you can see this overall. So that, that's your different sectors, right? Cause when I, I gotta say everything, um, if, if you look kind of overall, uh, this is imports, right? So it's definitely on the slower side. So this means that, uh, Chinese people are, are bringing less products in, uh, are they sending products out? That is also on a slowdown, right? You guys can see this here. Um, the actual numbers themselves, though, it says exports declined 14.5% uh, uh, year on year. And then that's the steepest fall since the outset of the coronavirus pandemic in February 2020. And then imports tumbled 12.4%. Uh, so um, uh, I guess they were uh, expecting this economy. So we're expecting, you know, a downturn, but not necessarily this big. Um, before they were expecting 12.5 and 5% respectively. So I think the imports is the one that really is, is spooking people. Um, in terms of the Moody's thing, basically they're saying that banks are gonna be struggling. And um, it's kind of interesting because they uh, did a bunch of downgrades as they're saying here on like small uh, banks, but then they put a bunch of other banks on the watch list. It's like, what? And uh, speaking of watch lists, uh, my book comes out uh, either this week or next week. I'll keep you guys uh, posted on that. And uh, let's get to the banks. But I just wanna mention that because um, people do uh, wonder when it's coming out, it's coming out soon. So cool kids read books. Um, but uh, go score to the banks, and uh, cool kids also read about banks as well. Um, okay, so it says here, Moody's cut ratings of a host of small and mid-sized banks late Monday and placed several big Wall Street names on negative review. The firm lowered the ratings of 10 banks by one rung, while major lenders, so it's Bank of uh, New York Mellon, U.S. Bank Court, State Street, Truist Financial, uh, Coal and Frost Bank, Northern Trust, are now under review for a potential downgrade, so it's kind of like, saying, hey, you know, we're looking at these ones. We're not so sure how we feel about them. And then it says here, Moody's also changes outlook to negative for 11 banks, including Capital One, Citizens, uh, Fifth Third Bank. Among small lenders receiving official downgrades were M&T, Pinnacle Financial, BOK Financial, and Webster Financial. So basically we're worried about the banks. Um, let's take a look at the, the language that uh, Moody's is saying here. It says, uh, U.S. banks continue to contend with interest rate and asset liability management, ALM they're calling it, a uh, risk with implications for liquidity and capital. As the wind out of unconventional monetary policy uh, drains system-wide deposits and higher interest rates depress the value of fixed uh, rate assets. So basically, um, you know, rates are going up and uh, quantitative uh, tightening is going on, quantitative easing is slowing. And they were saying here, you know, we had a, a long time of unconventional monetary policy. And basically, we had a long time of free money. <laughs> That's not necessarily happening anymore. Um, let's, let's keep going here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, many banks' Q2, uh, Q2 results, so quarter two results, showed growing profitability pressures, right? Harder for them to make money. That reduced their ability to generate an internal capital. Just not enough money to go around. And we know that banks have been um, tightening credit standards as well. It's been reported quite a bit. Uh, this comes as a mild uh, U.S. recession uh, is on the horizon for early 2024, 
and asset quality looks to set decline from solid but unsustainable levels with particular risk in some banks uh, commercial real estate portfolios. And we've talked about this before a while that um, uh, it's been reported all over the place that we have essentially a time bomb with commercial real estate. Basically, you know, people borrowed a whole bunch of money to build, you know, a bunch of new properties or renovate, et cetera. Uh, commercial real estate values went down. People are, people are working from home, this kind of things, or, you know, startup companies no longer need said real estate because they are out of business. You know, the money is slowing down. Um, or we'll just take a look at some of the language. Uh, we expect banks' ALM risk to be exasperated uh, by the significant increase in the Federal Reserve's policy rate, as well as ongoing reduction in bank system reserves at the Fed and relatively um, rarely deposits because of ongoing QT. There's just not enough money. Um, interest rates are likely to remain higher for longer until inflation returns to within the Fed's target rate. And as noted earlier, longer-term U.S. interest rates are moving higher because of multiple factors, which put further pressure on banks' office assets. So less money, higher rates, uh, everything uh, starts to slow down. And it's interesting because um, it, it's, uh, I, I've talked about this several times, and yet, you know, the, the market's been going up. I, I get that, guys. I can see the market, but it's always been odd. Um, I haven't you know, just randomly changed my tune because I, I, I know this stuff has, has been an issue. You've had this bank issue. You have the slowdown in China. And yet, like, I feel like the hype on Wall Street was all over AI. And I was just like, okay, it's a bubble. But yes, you can make money in the bubble. Just understand uh, when you are indeed in a bubble. Um, Saudi Arabia is cutting uh, oil production. That was a couple of days ago they announced that. Uh, Russia is as well. So that's a thing. And um, this is actually something that I think is really key to track. And I ask you guys this all the time, is how is housing affordability uh, in your neck of the woods? So according to this headline, this just came out today, over 80% of Americans think it's a bad time to buy a house. And that's according to a Fannie Mae survey. Um, I would tend to agree that I just said uh, rates are going up. Um, I think that at the moment, that may be like an average 30 years around 7%, something in, in that nature. Um, plus, uh, the price of homes just hasn't come down. Uh, I'm sure you guys know this. It's, things are just still expensive. And so um, something's got to give eventually, right? I mean, you would think that um, if, if the rates are going up, then people are like, I'm not buying a house now, if rates too high, or if credit uh, standards are raised, meaning that you know banks aren't going to give you loans so much, you just think that essentially people don't have enough money or uh, don't want to borrow at said rates. And so prices should come down eventually, but they haven't yet. It, it's it, it's That's been an odd thing. Um, that's why I always ask you guys, uh, what's going on in your neck of the woods? But evidently 80% of Americans agree with me. <laughs> that's not a great time uh, to buy a home. Um, what's interesting is that there was this crazy story here that uh, PayPal, you can read the headlines, PayPal launched a PYUSD stablecoin backed by the U.S. dollar. Uh, I was looking at this, and, and I honestly, guys, I don't get it. Um, I, I don't get, what I mean, I don't get is like if, if if I want to, you know, use PayPal and I want to send someone money, I am just want to send them dollars, you know, send them money. Um, I, I guess the advantage theoretically if I use PayPal's crypto, you know, uh, tag to the dollar kind of thing, I guess maybe it could be faster, but I just don't want to mess with this stuff. So I, I find this really interesting that PayPal's doing this. And, and the reason why I mention this is because like we, we see that, you know, the, our regular banks are having problems. And I don't know if from like average Joe perspective or average, you know, Sally perspective, they're like, hey, you know, I, I, I see that Moody's cut banks and therefore I want to buy stable coin at PayPal. <laughs> I, I, that's not where my mind goes uh, when I when I see these kind of things, you know, when I see this sort of, the the bank situation, uh, my mind goes is like yeah, uh, or, or sorry, not work with bank customers. My my mind goes like yeah, you know I I just want to have dollars, I like dollars, dollars are happy. And um, I've noticed that the dollar's been uh, spiking the last couple of days, and that's usually an indicator um, when when the uh, dollar goes up, the market tends to go down, and when the market uh, when the market goes up, the, the dollar tends to go down. They they run inverse of each other. So anyway, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on any one of these stories. Uh, again, Moody's has cut uh, the U.S. banks and China's export imports are slowing. Those are the two big stories of the day. Uh, thanks again for watching, everyone, and um, I will catch you in the next video.